Hey guys, this is Javan Joel. I am the lead developer here over at CloudGunk, and this is part two of getting started with Azure Media Services. If you watch my part one video, you know that uh, this is a project I worked on a while ago, and it was a very tough project. There was a lot of things I had to learn and that I did learn from it. And uh, basically, I'd like to give you guys a little of the things that I'd learned so that maybe it could help you out to get up and running with Azure Media Services a lot faster and easier. So let's go ahead and go right into it. I'll show you guys the steps that we're going to take to get started. All right, so here's the outline of the steps that we're going to use to encode our assets. First thing you want to do is you want to get these two media services NuGet packages. You just simply type that in, get that from NuGet. You're going to upload your media asset to your Azure Blob Storage. That's basically the source file that you're going to use to process for the output. You're going to queue the job using uh, configuration, optionally activating some media reserve units. Um, you have some presets for your configuration. I recommend this configuration, H.264 multiple bitrate, which you could find in this link over here. There's also some custom presets um, that you could find on this link. Four, you want to check the job for status for completion and then create the locator used. Let me show you how some of the configuration looks in those links. Um, again, Microsoft has some predefined presets, which you could find at that first link, which is here. It's just basically the string. Or you could use your own custom JSON preset uh, here, which uh, you're allowed to dictate bit rate, uh, the video width and height, even the output file name. All right, guys, so here's some code. This is my media encoding service job, which call, is called periodically. Here's the run method. So the first thing we do is we need to prepare our new jobs. These are the new media assets. In our database, we call uh, get the media files that are in the pending state. And we return this encoding job, which is a class we created that wraps up all the information for our media file. We return back the encoding result based on the state the source job is in. All the things we need to be able to uh, encode this specific job. Um, going back to our service, you see once we get the jobs, we know how many jobs are pending or processing. Uh, and based on that count, we activate the media reserve units that we need to process our active jobs. Um, the unit count of the reserve units will activate depend on how many jobs we have processing or a maximum of that we have defined in our global variables. So if the active units that we've defined does not equal the active unit count, we're going to go ahead and set the reserve units in our encoding service. I'll show you how that looks right now. This is calling Azure right now. We, we have the new unit count, which we're going to set the current active, current unit count. We're going to set the reserve unit type. This is the encoder type. We're going to use the standard S2 encoder, which is double the speed of the basic one. And we're going to call our Azure context. This is from our media services library. You see we have our cloud media context defined as a field. And in our constructor, we instantiate it using our REST API endpoint that Azure gives us and also our Azure, to Azure token credentials. This allows us to uh, act to connect onto our service itself. So once we do that, we check what are the current active units that are running on the service. If they don't equal the new unit count that we've defined, we're going to set the S2 standard unit type as we define over here. We'll set the new active count to the current reserve units and we'll simply call the update method. This will actually fire up those media reserve units which are used to process our video. Um, so we have the unit, unit count. We actually save this to a configuration in our local database so we know at any given time how many media reserve units are running. All right. So now that we have all our jobs, we're going to loop through each job and call this begin and code method. Uh, we assume uh, by default it's standard video encoding, but if the person who owns this account ha doesn't have a free storage plan, in other words, it's paid, they get a high definition encoding. And we have all that. That's the configuration we were talking about. And if it's an audio file, same thing. We have a standard encoding and a high definition encoding. So now we go ahead and call our add job directly on our service, which first thing we do is we're going to create an asset name based on the file ID. 
then we're going to connect to our Azure storage account which is where the original file was uploaded to we're going to create a blob client uh, then we're going to get the container reference for the container inside of the blob storage where the file is located and then we'll actually get a reference to the blob which is referenced by the file ID itself we call this fetch attributes because we'll need the attributes of the file in order for certain things we'll need when we're defining the encoding job um, and now we call inside of our Azure context which again is defined up here and we construct we're gonna get um, the a we're gonna create a blob from the blob reference that we just defined um, here are our credentials our storage account credentials we're gonna set the name of the asset to the based on a source blob asset name for the file ID we'll set the mime type and then we'll simply call update this is gonna create the asset we're basically duplicating the original asset so inside of our uh, media service so it could easily find it and be able to work with it uh, once we have that we'll go ahead and create the encoding job which we call this Azure context jobs which are source asset we use the media encoder standard preset with their standard and premium standards is used for most scenarios here's our encoding configuration HD or, or uh, standard definition the source asset we just created uh, the asset name um, and then we'll actually set the job name to the same name as the asset name because that allows us to locate it easier later uh, and then we just simply submit the job this begins the process of taking that file and encoding it to an output which can be uh, uh, sent to different types of clients. All right, back to our run method. Once we have the jobs that we were processing, um, once we come back, we're, we're here we're running it again. Now we're checking if there's any jobs that are processing. This is jobs that have already been sent up. Um, we look at that in our database and for each job, we again call wrap it around an encoding job and then we call get state the get state method goes into our encoding service again and the encoding service gets that asset name we defined where we named the job and then we call our Azure context we call Azure context jobs where the name is the job ID we check if there's if we actually got any count back and we get the first job and that will give us the job for this specific asset once we have the source job, we need to check the state. Is it in the error state? Is it canceled? If so, we go ahead and log that here if there was any issues. Um, likely, this is what we're looking for. We're looking for a finished state, which if it is finished, we set the result state to complete, and that's what we're going to return back, basically saying that now the result state is complete. This job is done. So once the job is done we call our encoder dot complete job which is again inside of the complete job this is going into our encoding service to call complete job um, here we see that we have we get a reference to the source job and now we're going to define some parameters we need a locator for this job to be able to locate this asset when we're playing it on a client so we get the output asset based on the job um, we get the asset ID and then we're gonna see if there's any locators already defined for this just in case this service ran and prematurely um, uh, ended before we want to make sure there's not already a streaming locator defined if there isn't which likely there isn't we'll create a new one passing in our asset we're also sit checking if this is a public or private asset because some assets might be private and if so we'll need to define delivery policies and content keys for it uh, first thing we do is we remove any delivery policies and content keys just in case again this job ran before and prematurely exited we want to clear everything out to start fresh so if this is not a public asset and in other words this video is not public we're going to define delivery policies and content keys to keep it secure uh, I'll, I'll talk about this in a, the follow-up video after this video uh, once we have that we're going to call our Azure context and in our locators we're going to create an on-demand locator with our asset um, that we just created over here the permissions is a read permission and this locator expires 10,000 days from now as you can see here so once we have that we extract the URL from the streaming locator 
which we want to make sure we have an HTTPS version of that URL and that'll give us the URL to be able to locate this asset um, to be able to play it on a video player so we have our locator now the progressive locator is for our video thumbnails if we had any anyway once we're done we call our update state so that in our database we know that this video has completed processing and we're done uh, if we had any licenses which I'll get into that in the follow-up video we would update our licenses also um, so yeah that that means we're done with this specific asset we have our locators the job is complete um, we're good to go on this one all right so we called our encoding services service we completed the job you could see uh, we went through all this we created our locators here is where if it is a video we'll actually get the thumbnail assets the thumbnail assets have its own locators and over here in our context we're actually taking these assets and putting into a different storage container so that we could then uh, be able to access that easy I'll get into that in a follow-up video about locators and uh, content keys and things like that once we're done uh, we return back the results so that everybody knows that we're done and we update this in the database um, one thing we do is we don't need the original asset that we use to encode the job remember we copy that over so we actually look at that asset and delete it completely the original input asset is no longer needed we delete that out and we're done we have our streaming locator on our progressive locator URLs we completed the job uh, and that's it that's the end-to-end -end process needed to take check the jobs we uh, went through we completed the job and then at the end we send the message to the original account owner basically telling them your media files complete you're ready to go ahead and watch this video watch this audio it's accessible on any device uh, iPhone Android everything all right guys so that's basically it that covers everything um, obviously there's still a couple of topics that we haven't covered like for instance uh, um, key delivery policies and all that stuff I just touched on it but that in itself is its own video and I'll go over that in the final part of getting started with Azure Media Services next week Hope you guys enjoyed this. Hopefully it's helpful to you. Um, leave some comments. Let me know what you think. Let me know if there's something that I haven't covered. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll look forward to seeing what you guys say.